Hi, I'm Mark Smith with Macroscopic Solutions. Uh, today what we're going to be imaging is a jumping spider. Uh, this particular jumping spider that I selected, which is Phytopus audax, is quite dark. Uh, it also has black hairs that we're going to try and resolve, uh, pitted against a black background. It has really iridescent mandibles and its eyes are highly reflective. So what we're going to try and do is, even though we can't completely remove a reflection, we're going to try and bring out some color in the eyes instead. Okay, so some things I did here just to give you an indication of uh, when I collect a specimen and how I like to prepare them. Uh, I have a pin here, an insect pin, which I've snapped in half. That way I can mount it from the bottom and I can uh, orient my specimen just on the tip of the pin. We don't have to worry about removing the top. Um, I also took a little bit of like just a air bottle and just hit it to try and remove any dust and try to make it as clean as possible before we get started. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is take the camera back to 1x magnification and we're going to mount the specimen onto the universal stage. And once the pin is settled, now we, we just want to manipulate it a bit to try and um, basically get everything symmetrical and nice and square for a nice headshot. So we're going to turn our flash off. We're going to take our camera out of manual mode uh, and set it to automatic mode and open up our live view shoot window. While that's opening, I'll just go ahead and get started positioning this in a way that should work for us. Let me get a little bit more light on this. We're just going to use um, a light just for ori orienting the specimen. So you can see here, we have everything mounted on the universal stage. We have great flexibility uh, up and down. Uh, basically all five axes that we need. So A, B axes, and your X, Y, and your Z. So Y is going to be automatic. You can see I'm rotating the specimen here. A couple different ways to uh, change the X axis, but the simplest really is to just slide the camera. Okay, I think that's pretty centered. Uh, what I was going for is trying to get uh, the er, the hairs on the top of the spider's head uh, so that none of them are out of the frame. Uh, try to get the eyes nice and square, get everything so that it's facing the camera properly. Uh, so now that we have the mandibles uh, fixed and nice and centered and the eyes. Now there is probably still going to be some dust on here even though I did try and remove it, but we will show everybody how to do that in the end. Okay, so the next step after we have this, we could just go right ahead and and move all the way to the rear, set our focus stacking uh, parameters up. So the, this will be the, uh, the starting position, moving all the way through until everything just starts to go out of focus. That's going to be our end position. Uh, the working distance here, or not the working distance, but the, um, the depth of field is gonna be 40 microns at 5X magnification. So this is the full magnifying capabilities of the MPE 65 millimeter. What we'll do is we'll add our dome, and already you can you can kind of see how the light has balanced out so much. Uh, you are seeing some color in the background, which now you can see how, how uh, macro photographers add color. Uh, you can basically put any colored felt, multicolored paper back here, and modify the color uh, however you choose. But for me, we're going to go for a crisp black background, so we're not going to put anything back there. Um, we want to steer away the light and now we want to start to set up uh, the camera uh, basically all of its settings using manual mode so we're going to take the camera out of automatic we're going to close our live view window open up a quick preview and we're going to turn our flashback on Okay, so I took a look at it before and took a picture. This was how much dust I had on it, so I wanted to clean it up a little bit. Um, but now let's go ahead. We're going to take a test image. I've got an ISO of 500, aperture of f4, exposure 1 over 200, uh, and I've got my, my flash up there, I think, set to 1 over 8. I don't like to go 
um, any brighter than one over eight, just to keep the flash at a reasonable temperature um, throughout the stack. Okay, so now let's go ahead, we're going to take a test image. Okay, it looks pretty consistent with where we were before. One thing I am gonna do is I'm gonna bring the lights a little bit closer to the specimen. They're a little bit farther away now because I was working with it. This should brighten it a tad. Okay, there you go. That's much, much brighter. Um, and you can see here, even in the eyes, the eyes are going to be presented black. If you're a lower magnification, you're, you're actually going to see the diffuser really well, the dome really well, and in which case you are going to see those here. But uh, because we're so heavily magnified, we're also going to pick up on some of the natural color of the eyes as well, which is uh, really quite, quite neat. Uh, in the end. Okay, so now what we want to do is just delete the test images that we just captured. Minimize that. I'll enlarge this window and we'll press start and we will begin to capture the images needed uh, to complete the stack. Okay, all the images have been collected. So now what we're going to do is minimize this. We're going to kill power to the flash, kill power to the camera. Open up Zareen Stacker and begin to focus stack uh, those images. Don't forget to add the magnification that was used in case the scale bar is important. Okay, the stack is now finished. We're going to save the output image and open the file in Photoshop to see what editing might need to be done, if any. Uh, just, just looking at this, we can tell that we did get uh, nearly all the hairs uh, that are quite dark. Uh, they're visible, and it looks like we're even going to be able to see some detail. Those would be even more visible if we stepped up the magnification to maybe 7.5 or 10x using the Toyo objectives. Uh, those videos are going to come later when I start using the micro kit just to give people an indication. I do have a sample over there uh, that would sort of require uh, the micro kit, but um, we'll get to that when, when the time comes. Okay, so we have now saved the file. We're going to close the rain stacker and open up the final output. And from here, we're going to take a closer look at what we're dealing with. Now, again, I slightly overexposed this image, uh, staying consistent with what I described before. For that reason, you can sort of see maybe that there's a bit of a washed out hue to the image, uh, particularly down here. It looks like some of the bright white hairs sort of, you know, almost are glowing to the point where they are, are creating that washed out hue. But the reason why I did that is so that we could ensure that against a black background, we could resolve all of these hairs, which are quite dark. Uh, and we've achieved that. So that's a very good thing. Um, now, uh, staying true and staying consistent with what we've uh, mentioned before, the first thing again I'm going to go to is curves. And I think right, uh, just knowing how a few of the last images worked out. I think if we take the top right quadrant and just adjust it up a little bit like that. There we go. Now we're going to brighten everything. Those hairs are coming back. And all we want to do is sort of, yep, balance out that washed out hue appearance uh, by dragging a square in the lower left hand quadrant down. So you can see that hue sort of almost uh, disappeared a little bit. I'm not even going to go into um, shadows and highlights on this one because the detail is looking pretty good just, just based on a lot of the different, you know, attributes and characteristics of this specimen. This is a particularly difficult specimen to shoot because it has these really bright white hairs and then it has these really dark black hairs, especially when it's against a solid uh, black or white background like this one. Um, not to mention you can even see the leg here is quite black uh, and we're able to still resolve resolve those details as well. So 
all in all, actually, without really any Photoshop at all, I'm pretty happy with the quality of this image. Uh, because I would like to get this image up on uh, the Flickr account, I think what I will do is do a bit of a spot treatment. So I'm going to take our uh, quick band-aid tool, make sure the size is right. I'm just going to take some of these larger, um, larger grains and just start to get rid of them. You can see a few in the eyes. You know, but while we're removing these from the eyes, I just want to draw everybody's attention. Take a look at the eyes. There's, there's actually quite a bit of detail and detail that you can even make out on the sphere. Uh, if you look here, these are actually scratches in the lenses on the front of, um, you know, on, on the front of the eyes of this particular species. Uh, you are seeing a reflection of the hairs and, of course, the diffuser. Uh, we've done our best to make sure that it's not too obvious. Um, but all in all, you know, I'm pretty happy with the way the details are being displayed in this photo. All right, we'll continue to just sort of do a spot clean. This one, I think I, I noticed quite, quite heavily. Um, let's see how that worked. Yep. And this one up here. And I think all in all, that's that's pretty decent. Uh, we don't need to get rid of the, the smaller stuff. It's, it's going to be hardly noticeable. I think one other thing we could potentially do in this example maybe is curves, just for a more aesthetic appearance, is just sort of we are going to make everything in the background just a bit darker. The hairs are still visible, um, but I think that's just going to give it a little bit of a better look uh, all in all. So... I, again, I, you know, I don't think that there's much to do with this image, but just to give everybody sort of some knowledge on how these photos are captured, these jumping spiders, uh, these headshots, again, they're incredibly aesthetic. They're very beautiful. Um, this, is, this is generally the standard practice. Uh, and, you know, rule of thumb is it's always, it's always very good if you can get your lighting right before uh, having the need to edit. And here we, we barely had to touch it up at all. So, that's, that's sort of a winning recipe for, um, you know, just a good method and a good process. So I hope this image was, I hope this video was, was helpful for you. And I look forward to the next one. Next one's going to be quite interesting. We're going to be 3D modeling a specimen uh, from Washington State. Uh, it's going to be basically a jaw from a, a prehistoric rodent. So stay tuned for that. Uh, hopefully that will help some people that are looking to get into photogrammetry. All right, see you then.